it again. <laughs> this is our fourth and last show of the weekend. And I want to start off by saying a huge thank you to everybody who's been so kind and come out with such lovely comments about our show earlier. It really is my absolute pleasure to be out here uh, with my lovely horse and my falcons and you and uh, spending half an hour together. Really putting the world to rights, getting a lot of our chest, but enjoying ourselves, that's what it's all about. So my name's Jonathan Marshall, this lovely horse is Amadeus. I've got my three falcons with me, Duchess, Sonnet and Aria. I'm gonna fly Aria in a little while. But my show really takes you back in time to begin with on purpose. And we always go back to Black Beauty. And if you're old enough to remember Black Beauty, you'll remember the 70s, the days of Swap Shock and ABBA were in the charts. We had those David Cassidy jeans. Do you remember Cheggers, Keith Cheggwin? <laughs> and uh, Dickie Davis was on the telly. And uh, Kevin Keegan played for Liverpool. And of course, White Horses. I was brought up in Southport, Lancashire. The hope of Red Rum. Red Rum was my hero when I was a kid. And we used to see him training on the beach. And me and my sister, Mandy, we'd take our ponies down there riding. Dreaming that one day we'd be professional riders. And in the evening, we'd watch Horse of the Year show. Harvey Smith was my hero, because he was rude and he used to do that and get in trouble for it. I like Harvey Smith. Do you remember the Puissants? They were jumping over walls nine feet tall. Lovely. And I was lucky, I followed my dream and I grew up and became a professional rider. I got involved in films, I did Game of Thrones. Have we got any Game of Thrones fans? Yeah, quite a few of you here. Well, I did uh, Game of Thrones the last season. I went out to Ireland. I was involved in doing stunt work and sword fighting. And I actually had a sword fight with Jon Snow. We spent two nights rehearsing it. We filmed it over and over again. And they didn't even use it in the last plumbing programme. Can you imagine how upset I was? My little boy Saul said to me, Daddy, when you were in Game of Thrones, which was you? How could you tell? I said, well, you know all the cool bits? He said, yeah. He said, that was me. <laughs> Anyway, uh, all of that sounds great, and it is great, believe me. As I said earlier, I'm fortunate enough to have met some amazing people. Some people who you'll have never heard of, just normal people who are lovely, kind souls. But one of the kindest souls I ever met was actually Michael Jackson, the singer. I met him in 2004, spent a couple of days with him. And what a lovely, kind man he was, and nothing at all like you would expect. Don't believe a word of what the newspapers tell you. He was a really nice man, very kind, and uh, we've met all sorts of people. But the main thing is, it's the love of horses all through my life, which has been the biggest joy. I'm 54 in about a month, and from the age of 15, 16, I've been a professional falconer and a professional horse rider. And everyone told me, oh, you can't do that. Nobody becomes falconers, nobody becomes horse riders. You know, you want to get a job in a factory or you want to become a, a this or a that or a the other. And I said, no, I want to follow me dream. Are you kids here, how old are you, lovey? You're eight, how old are you? You're nine, how old are you? Five, how old are you guys? Three and four, how old are you? Well, you don't realize, you're beautiful by the way, all you kids have got the most amazing life ahead of you. And all you've got to do is make it happen. And never take no for an answer. When someone says you can't do that, you're not good enough to say that. I will. Not only will I do it, I'll do it ten times better than you even imagined. One of my heroes, the great Muhammad Ali. Do you ever think he ever went into a boxing ring thinking I'm not going to win? Of course he didn't. He went in knowing all he had to do was turn up and he was going to win. And that is how you're going to get on. You kids here, remember this. I wish when I was your age someone had told me that. Luckily enough, I didn't need somebody. I already knew it. But do you know who tells me every day what I've just told those kids? This horse. This horse is the most honest, kind soul you would ever meet. My falcons are the same. They don't lie. They can't lie. They don't have the ability to lie. They can only tell the truth. 
and I always say this, imagine if everybody you knew could only talk truth, even if sometimes people don't want to hear it, it's still the truth. And we're, at the moment, you, me, everyone, we're all told, you can't say that, Ooh, you're not allowed to think that, Ooh, you dare not say that. Well, let me tell you, there is no such thing as a woke horse, and there's no such thing as a politically correct John 832. They're real, and we need to listen to them because they are our greatest teachers. And I don't say that to offend anybody, I say it because it's the truth. And we need to live in a world of truth. And the truth is, you kids can do whatever you want. Whatever it is you want to do, you can do it. I know you can. Every one of you, whether you're black, white, whatever religion you are, whatever country you come from, whatever language you are, you're all beautiful. Every one of you. Never let anybody tell you you're not because you are. My horse knows that's true. The most important thing is what you're like inside, what your heart is like. And Amadeus taught me to think with my heart, not think with my head, think with my heart. Because what humans do is we think too much and we feel too little. My horse can only feel. Everything about him is all feel. He's very sensitive to energy. And we're all part of the same collective consciousness, all of us, me, you, the horse, the bird, this young man here, we're all part of the same awareness. We're just different aspects. That's why my show is called Free Spirits. Because I was always told as a kid I was a free spirit. My grandma used to say, oh, you're going to get in trouble here well, when you're old. Why? Oh, you're a free spirit. There's nothing wrong with being a free spirit. It's great. I'm going to ask my friend in the commentary position just to pause. A second, the music, because a few people have said to me, well, you go around telling everybody about being kind, and yet you've got a whip in your hand. Do you whip your horse? Is that kind? Well, I want to reassure you, I don't whip my horse. And I'll show you what it's for. There's a lady here with lovely red hair. Can I get you to put your hand out? Just put your hand out, lad. Stretch it right out. Now, if I do this on your hand, does that hurt? Is it cruel? Am I causing you pain and discomfort? No, of course I'm not. So, I'm going to show you why I use a crop or a whip with me horse. If I want to teach him to Spanish walk, that's where he does this. He lifts his legs up. Or if I want to teach him to bow, and that's when he does this, watch. He normally gets a clap for that, by the way. <laughs> People say to me, how have you trained him to do that? How have you taught him? Well, I'll tell you, now this comes at no extra cost to the show. This is a free training lesson for you people, so video it, okay? When a foal is first born, it struggles to its feet. And then the mother, the mare, licks the foal in part of its body that it can't reach. It can't reach in between its eyes. Its tongue won't reach, it can't get to its forehead. So the mother licks the foal right there. Now when I get new horses, and sometimes I get horses which have been terribly abused, I stroke them in the same spot where the mother licked them when they were babies. And what it does is it brings back a memory to the horse from a very comforting time in their life when they were with their mummy. It's the first thing they remember. So I stroke them in between the, their eyes. That's the first thing to remember. And then after a few days, I attach a sound to the stroke. So I do a whistle. I go like this. Okay. So he gets to think of the stroke and the whistle as the same thing. And that is a bit like saying good boy. The next thing I do, if I want him to lift his foot up with the tickling stick, which you lot call a whip, I tickle his foot like this. And it's like a fly bothering him. It's annoying. So he lifts his leg up. I'll show you. Watch. So as soon as he lifts his leg up, I go, tell him he's a good boy, okay? Then I attach a sound to the tickle. So now I'm going to click with my mouth while I tickle his foot, watch. You see? So he knows that click and tickle means to lift your foot up because he gets told he's a good lad. And you just build on that and then every day you go... And he's learned how to Spanish walk. That's how you do it. So this isn't for punishing him. 
It's not to go, ah, bad horse, not at all. I can tell you something, and you kids who are listening, you get a lot further with sugar than you do with salt. That will make sense to you one day. Kindness is the way forward when you're dealing with animals. You can bully them into submission. Of course you can. That's what they used to do. It's not called breaking a horse for just accident. They wanted to break their spirit. But that isn't the way forward. To gentle a horse is the way forward. To be kind, to get their trust. And actually, a word that I use a lot in my show, to show them love. That's the point. It's love. I do this because I love my horses. Believe me, if I wanted to be a millionaire, I wouldn't have horses and falcons. I'd have gone into selling petrol. <laughs> Don't get me started. I'm having to really bite me tongue now. I could get on the soapbox, but I won't. Anyway, that was a quick sort of uh, explanation of what the crop is for. Do you want to show, do, shall I show you how I get into rear? Do you want, do you want to quickly learn that? Yay! Would you like to quickly learn how to Yay! make him rear? Yay! Okay. So, how you do it? You ask him to go forward and backward at the same time. So I'm going to tap him on his bum, which means go forward, but with my hand, I'm going to ask him to go backwards. So he doesn't know whether he's going backwards or forwards. So his only option is to lift his legs up at the front. And as soon as he does that, I tell him he's a good lad. So watch this. Tap him on the bum. It means go forward. Push him back with his legs. Watch. Good boy. He goes, oh, okay. Well, uh, so I tell him he's a good lad by whistling him like that. And then I'll do it again. And I'll say, hop, 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 hop. Good boy. So I've attached a sound to the rear, and now I don't, I don't have to touch, you, touch him anymore. All I've got to do is go, up, 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 up. you see? That's how you do it, it's easy. <laughs> anyway, we're going to carry on where we were. If you, if you can press play again, we're gonna move on with the rest of the show. That was just a little extra bit I threw in because a few people asked me. So, we've got a fanfare. <laughs> So why have we got a fanfare? Well, because I'm about to introduce you to the Prince of Birds, the Peregrine Falcon, the fastest living creature on the planet. And I think the most beautiful as well. And the one we're going to fly is called Aria. And she's waiting right here. She's a lovely bird, this one. Beautiful falcon. Now, I wrote a book about falcons over the winter. It's called Spirit, the Fastest Bird in the World. And basically, I'll tell you what it's about once I've let her go. Are you going to go and have a lovely fly? Off you go. Some of you will remember the story called The Emperor's New Coat. For those of you who don't know The Emperor's New Coat, it's basically the story about a king who's told by everybody that he's wearing the most amazing clothes. When in actual fact he's not wearing any clothes at all. He's totally naked. But everybody goes along with the lie. They all go, oh yes, yes, you look great. Oh, you look amazing. And it takes the innocence of a child to point out to the king that he's actually naked. And he goes, the king is in the all together, the all together. So my story about spirit, the fastest bird, is the same story because the falcon cannot see the lie. She can only see truth. So I hope that you might buy my book. And there's a film that goes with it, which you scan the code and you get the film as well. It was filmed down in Cornwall, where I live. And it's a really good one for the kids because they'll relate to it. And the adults, especially those of you who are deep thinking, will see a completely different level and you'll relate to it. Here's my beautiful falcon. She's now flying on a thermal behind those trees. Look at that, she's got some height. Now I'm going to fly the falcon while I'm riding the horse. And at the end, I'm going to get the falcon to fly right through the horse's legs. You won't see this anywhere else in the world. Hopefully today, she'll be going through his legs at around about 100 miles an hour. 
the music which I'm playing, one of my favourite pieces of music, it's by a gentleman called Thomas Ferguson, and it's called Promise. And I promise my horse, my falcon, that not only will I look after them, but I'll love them until the day I die. Okay, now I'm going to ask my friend in the commentary position just to fade me down and pause me for a sec. And the reason being is, as you've probably gathered by now, my whole show is time to music. And so what I have to do is I have to work out how long I've got. And because it's warm this afternoon, I know that my falcon wants to go for a good fly, a really nice fly, because yesterday she got soaking wet through, she was miserable. And so today, with it being a little bit warmer and brighter, she wants to enjoy herself. She's just over the tops of those trees, can you see? So I'm just gonna give her a couple of extra minutes and let her really enjoy herself. There's a reason my show is called Free Spirits. It's called that because my falcon is a free spirit. My horse is a free spirit. I'm a free spirit. Remember me telling you, my grandma, oh, Jonathan, you're a free spirit, you are. And I used to say, what are you talking about, grandma? But she was actually really spot on. I didn't even realize until she died. My grandma died about four years ago. She was 95. And she'd spent all of my life telling me I was a free spirit. And it was only when she died I realized what she was telling me. Because I got this feeling that in actual fact, being a free spirit is a good thing. It means you're brave enough to stand in your own truth. Okay, we're ready. Whenever you are, we're back to where we were. The Falcon's ready to do her stuff. Okay, Aria. Let's get her to do some work. Now I'm going to try and bring her all the way round. Excellent. I'm going to let her have a watch on the floor. 
floor, just over there, so you can just sit down and have it by the others. Good girl, give her a massive round of applause, that'd be superb. <laughs> Thank you. 